one of the most satisfying jobs at the end of the season and one of my favourite jobs is deshelling beans. These have been left to dry out for a couple of weeks now. They always save my seeds at the end of the year, saves money and it's really satisfying. Look at all those nice lovely beans for next year. Decided to pick the pumpkins, now it's the end of the season. I've got a heritage variety here called Mirena de Choga and a French variety called Mus de Provence, a really nice eating pumpkin. And we've got some butternut squash and some spaghetti squash as well, so they're going to be lovely. Store them in the shed for a few months and we'll just eat them whenever we need them. I think this just qualifies as a butternut squash. Not a massive harvest, but it's enough for the two of us. Not bad. These outdoor tomatoes, which I'm growing in just horse manure, nothing else, just pure horse manure. Still growing strong. A lot of green ones, but um, still there's quite a lot of red ones. Still picking tomatoes, even well into October. Crazy. Hello everybody and welcome back to Down to Earth with Jim. In today's video I'm just doing a little bit of, obviously I've been clearing more beds which takes me quite a few weeks anyway, I don't like to do it all at once, it's quite a long process. I like to have it cleared for about November time, so I've got a few weeks yet but I've done quite a bit of it so far, I've made good progress. Um, as well as that I've been saving seeds and there's another job that I want to be getting on with and that is um, replacing the wood on these, uh, on the borders on these beds. Now I like to use wood, wooden lengths for all around all my beds. I feel like it's neater. Um, some people like to do it differently and just don't have any borders at all. But I like to use wooden borders. Now they're all rotting away now and falling apart, and they're not really any good to anybody now. So they need to be replaced. I did make them during lockdown with wood that was already used anyway. Obviously, um, I did things on a budget for obvious reasons, lockdown and all them things. I've got some quite decent wood, wooden lengths, they're about, they're about 12 feet long. Um, it's a bit like, they're, they're sort of like pallet boards, but they're a little bit thicker, so I managed to get some of that for free, so that's good. Um, I suggest anyone do the same. Facebook Market is a great place to find free um, second-hand wood. And I'm also going to be making these beds actually a little bit bigger because I am running out of space. You can never have too much space, I think. So my paths, I'm still going to allow two feet of space to get a wheelbarrow down because there's nothing more annoying than trying to get a wheelbarrow down a path and you can't get it down and you're taking out all the plants on, along the way. But before I do get on with that, I just want to talk about um, how I acquired this allotment and sort of my journey so far over the last three years. So I've always been a passionate gardener, it's always been a massive hobby of mine and it's been my uh, dream for quite a few years to get a plot so I decided to just stick myself on a waiting list. I acquired this plot during November of 2019 and it was a quite, in quite a mess actually. Um, there wasn't anything on here, it was all neglected um, all the soil was hard and compacted with fine weed roots, mare's tails roots, um, and no, nobody had really done anything with it for quite a few years. Now, I was lucky enough to only have waited on the waiting list for a short time. I was only on the waiting list for a few months, actually, because I think quite a few people didn't want to take the plot on because... Um, they wanted a plot that was already running, already had things on it, and it was ready to go really. So a few people that were on the waiting list before me turned it down, so then it was handed on to me. And I saw quite a lot of potential in it, because um, it is a little bit bigger than most other plots. It's, it goes out about 5 to 10 metres more on the end, because my plot is on the end, so there's a little bit more space for me. And I saw a lot of potential in it, and obviously Lockdown happened several months later in March of 2020. Nobody saw it coming. I didn't see it coming, obviously. And I had six months off work because of COVID um, on furlough. And so I managed to get down to the plot nearly every day. 
I made really good use of the time that I had off. And I managed to create this plot, which had nothing on it, just a small little greenhouse with broken windows. I managed to turn it into a plot that now is completely filled with beds. There's no wasted space. Um, I spent all the lockdown digging up all the soil, cultivating it, uh, making all my borders around my beds. And yeah, I managed to turn it upside down. And of course, it was great to be able to come down here every single day. I at least had somewhere to come to because we live in a flat which doesn't have a garden. So it was really good, especially for mental health as well. It was good to be able to come down. And yeah, it, just, it was great to have this plot to come down to and keep me busy during um, the months where nothing was really functioning, when the world had stopped, you know. Um, for anyone that doesn't know what an allotment is, because maybe maybe you live in the States, which is, you know, allotments are a British thing. It's basically a plot of land which you rent out, pay um, rent every year. It's quite cheap, doesn't cost that much, around about £50 a year, roughly. Um, so you rent it out. Um, you have other neighbours as well. It's a big, um, a big site and everyone has an allotted space to... Um, pay rent to. Um, it's a thing that started off around World War II when people were growing quite a lot of their own food and it's just a, a thing that stuck really and they're becoming a lot more popular now I think with the cost of living going up and prices rising and all that. Um, so I think it is really important that people uh, do grow their own food actually because I think it's only going to get worse in the future and it's I think it's one of the most important skills that you can have really growing your own food and of course growing your own food you know where it's come from you know that no nasty chemicals have been used it's all organic and you know who knows what commercially grown veg it is coming from you don't really know what has been grown what what is in the soil when it's being grown so at least when you're growing it yourself not only does it taste better but you know that no nasty chemicals and pesticides have been used as well. So I think there's an increasing awareness of that as well. You know, growing your own food, it um, tastes better, um, it saves you money. You know, um, it's, um, you know that no chemicals have been used, it's all organic. You know, it's good to come down to the plot and take food from it. You know, you can come down here whenever you want. If we do end up having, you know, food supply issues because of our constantly changing world you know things are changing the world is changing at a rapid pace you know if things do go bad and um, food supply is affected in the future you know it's good to be able to go out into your garden or your allotment and pick food from your allotment that you've grown and it doesn't really cost you anything so i'm going to get on with replacing the wood around these beds now i'm just going to do these couple of beds um I don't want to do too much at once and uh, I think it's going to be a gradual process of replacing all the wood around all the different beds on my plot. Yeah, these, um, yeah, these were no good. Yeah, completely rotten the way through so yeah definitely in need of uh, replacing <laughs> I've um, replenished all the wood around the outside and I've actually joined the two beds together. There used to be a path running through here but I've uh, cut it off and I've expanded it out all around the edges by a few inches actually so um, there's some more space um, in here for growing whatever I want to grow. I think I'm going to grow onions in here like next year. I want to grow enough onions to last all throughout the winter and into the next season. I feel like I haven't grown quite enough onions this year and I want to grow more so I'm probably going to fill this bed up with onions next year and then probably fill another one like over there with uh, onions. Now I did have to pull back all this weed fabric because I've expanded it out into the path a little bit. I've had to 
all those weed fabric back, which was a little bit of a pain, but um, you know, do what it is. Got some more space now, though. Um, the purple sprouting broccoli are still in situ there. I'm going to leave them there. And I'm probably going to have to dig around the edge here where I have expanded it because it's still um, hard packed from when it was a path. So I'll probably do that next time I come down. But uh, I've done what I wanted to do today. And yeah, I've done this. It much, much, looks much neater now. It's just a case of neatening it up and cutting this off. So that was my little vlog video for today. I just wanted to get this uh, old wood out that was rotting and replace it with this new stuff. Um, I do have to finish it off. I'll do that next time I'm down. Just uh, neatening it up now, tidying it up. And I um, just wanted to talk about the process in which I've got my allotment and what I've done so far, really, my journey. So thank you for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, then please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in the next video. Happy gardening.